So in this video, we're going to look at the Lorentz transforms. The Lorentz transforms are really, really important for special relativity. But before we look at the Lorentz transformations, let's have a look at the Galilean transformations which they replaced. A transformation is just a way of getting from one reference frame to another reference frame. So for the Galilean transformations, it's really important that you remember that distance is just given by speed times time. Now prior to the 20th century, the Galilean transforms worked really well because people didn't move too quickly. But as technology is developing and we're getting faster and faster and faster, we're beginning to need to use the Lorentz transforms more and more often. Now just a note, in the examples I'm going to refer to Mo and Joe in the special relativity section. This comes from the Feynman lectures in physics. Whenever he was doing examples of relativity, he used Mo and Joe as his two observers in two different reference frames. Imagine that we have Joe here in reference frame S. A point P in this reference frame is given by x, y, z, has x coordinate, a y coordinate, and a z coordinate. Now imagine that Mo is moving relative to Joe. This is Mo's reference frame. It's called reference frame S prime, and it is moving along the x axis of Joe's reference frame with a speed u. So physically, you can imagine Joe being on the platform in the little clip that you saw on the Einstein light, and Mo is on the train in that same clip. So point P in Mo's reference frame has coordinates x dash, y dash, and z dash. And let's have a look at the relationship between x and x dash y and y dash, z and z dash. Well, x dash is equal to Joe's x coordinate. And now we need to subtract off this ut term. As this distance, you can see, is shorter than the x distance in Joe's reference frame. Now, in the y direction and the z direction, there is no relative movement between these two frames. So these coordinates stay the same. So we've got y dash is equal to y and z dash is equal to z. And obviously, time is not going to depend on your reference frame. So we also have t dash is equal to t. And these are called the Galilean transformations. Now, up until the beginning of the 20th century, it was thought that these were good transformations as it was commonly believed that the laws of physics are the same in any inertial reference frame. An inertial reference frame is one which is undergoing constant velocity. It's not accelerating. And so most of the laws of physics if they apply in Joe's reference frame, also apply in Mo's reference frame. Let's just have a quick look at a common law of physics, Newton's second law. Okay, let's assume that it holds in Joe's reference frame. So we know that the, if we apply a total force, then we'll get an acceleration m d squared x dt squared. And let's have a look at what's going to happen in Mo's reference frame. So we have, um, we can write this first transformation up here as x is equal to x dash plus ut. So this tells us that dx dt is equal to dx dash dt plus u. And so we've got d squared x dt squared is equal to d squared x dash dt squared. And then using the fact that t dash and t are identical, we've got d squared x dash over dt dash squared. So we can write this as m d squared x dash over dt dash squared is equal to f total dash i.e. if Joe feels a force in his reference frame, then Mo feels the same force in his reference frame. 
However, at the beginning of the 20th century, some problems were starting to emerge with this picture, in particular with the speed of light. Maxwell had just come up with some equations and Maxwell's equations actually predicted that the speed of light should be the same in all reference frames. Now if we use the Galilean transformations, that's just not true. Let's assume that light has speed c which is equal to the displacement over the time in s then in s dash we've got that the speed is x dash over t dash now x dash is equal to x minus ut and this is over t dash which is the same as t so this is equal to x over t minus u and x over t is equal to c so this is c minus u so you can see that if light is traveling with a speed c in frame s in joe's frame it has a speed c minus u in Mohs frame and this was an issue because it means that you can conduct experiments with light and you can then work out which reference frame you're in how fast your reference frame is going so the laws of physics are not all the same in all reference frames if these Galilean transformations are true now at about the same time Lorentz came up with some transformations which allow for this constant speed of light so the Lorentz transformations can be written as x dash is equal to x minus ut over the square root of 1 minus u squared on c squared which is sometimes written as gamma x minus ut where gamma is equal to 1 over the square root of 1 minus u squared on c squared y is equal to y dash z is equal to z dash and the interesting one is the time t dash is equal to t minus ux over c squared over the square root of 1 minus u squared on c squared which is equal to gamma t minus ux on c squared. Now we can show that if light has a speed c is equal to x over t in Joe's reference frame then using these transformations the speed of light in Mohs reference frame is x dash over t dash which is equal to gamma x minus ut over gamma t minus ux on c squared these gammas will cancel out let's divide both the top and the bottom by t so we've got x over t minus u over 1 minus u x on t over c squared now x on t we've said was c so this is c minus u over 1 minus u on c squared times c so this is equal to c outside of 1 minus u on c over this cancels 1 minus u on c this part cancels so this is c so if something is traveling with a speed c in joe's reference frame it is also traveling with the speed C in Mohs reference frame if we use these Lorentz transforms.